Before Kyle Busch became the driver we all know, love, and in some cases hate, he was just another prospect looking for his big break in the Cup Series. At the age of 18, he made his Busch Series debut for Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Nemechek and ended up finishing second. This day proved that not only was he talented, but he was a once-in-a-lifetime talent as well. The following season, he ran in the number 5 low Chevy full-time, scoring 5 wins and a second-place finish in the points. It was an amazing rookie season in the Busch Series, and in 2005 he would go full-time, but the season prior, as he was running in the Busch Series full-time, Hendrick Motorsports decided it was best to get him much-needed Cup experience. This would be a fifth Hendrick Motorsports Cup Series entry for the 2004 season. At the helm of this R&D project was former championship crew chief Gary DeHart. He led Terry Labonte to his upset 1996 championship over Jeff Gordon. There were no expectations really, this was a young driver just trying to get some much needed seat time for the following season, while also working as an R&D project, testing some setups for some other cars, etc. Not a whole lot was expected, but nobody could have imagined it would have gone this bad. This is the worst Hendrick Motorsports entry. Four cars had to start this race at the back, and we're told Kyle Busch just brushed the wall, driving his first Nextel Cup race in that 84. Watch this. He's, he's, he, this kid has done this all weekend long. I watched him practice. He did it qualifying, and bam, he did it just in the second lap of the race. I know your hot spot was turn two, but turn four has been a hot spot too. But I think what we forget about Kyle Busch, 18 years old, he's making his first next step to start. Yeah, and the thing about it is, Larry, you can hit the wall off of turn four there, brush it, and keep on going. If you hit the wall down in turn one, you're probably going to have a lot of damage. What started as a hopeful debut ended in misery. Despite a strong 18th place start, Kyle couldn't keep it off the wall all weekend long during practice and finally paid for it during the race. He ended up scraping the right side of his car, had to come to pit road to repair some damage, and eventually left the race entirely by lap 13 with engine problems, relegating him to a 41st place finish. Kyle Busch, as you can see here, didn't make it any easier on himself. He wrecked his primary car during the final practice session this morning. Well, technically it wasn't his primary car. The car they wanted to use at Texas, they brought down here tested a few weeks ago. Well, he wrecked that one. So he's gone to the backup, to the backup car, as the 18-year-old will attempt to qualify for just his second Nextel Cup race today. The second attempt at Texas was a straight-up nightmare. First, you had the crash in practice, relegating him to a backup car. Then secondly, he's not even fast enough in the backup car to qualify for that said race. The team failed to qualify for Texas. While the team was very disappointed, everyone gathered together, regrouped, and was able to make that season's Coca-Cola 600. The Hendrick entry started 27th and pretty much stayed there the entire race, running in the mid-20s all the way down to the low 30s. The final result was a 32nd place finish 7 laps down, but the good news is he was able to keep the car in one piece. Just as they were finally moving forward, they ended up taking a couple steps back at New Hampshire. Just wow. right when you jump on the throttle. Broke loose. Mm. And then broke. And then broke. Traction. Everybody involved couldn't have been more downtrodden. You wreck at New Hampshire before you even make your first lap of qualifying, then head to Michigan and you're not fast enough to make the race entirely. Come a few weeks later, they tied their best qualifying attempt with an 18th place start at Fontana. This race turned out to be their best of the season. They finished not only 24th, their best finish of the season, but you also end up finishing on the lead lap for the first time ever. Come chase time, they would start affecting contenders. It's the 84 of Kyle Busch, slow on the racetrack. Caution is out. Caution on the speedway. Oh, man, what a tough break for Mark Martin. I... Power is flat. He had no choice. Wow, the field frozen on lap 140. That's a break break, break uh, like. Yeah, or break uh, pad. And you wonder if Mark hit that. And we're hearing that that... Might have come off the 84 when he brushed the wall. Ah, and he's go. gone back to the garage. See Sixth the right two. side is flat. Anytime these cars hit the wall anymore, they break that brake rotor on the right front, and it scatters every place. We saw that at Bristol just a couple of yep, Dover, right. I guess it was. Yeah, Dover. Every place that brake rotor scattered. So Kyle Busch, 
Trying to gain some Nextel Cup experience. Back in the garage, finished for the day. The last three races they ever did were the worst imaginable. First off at Kansas, you affect one of the title contenders, Mark Martin, after he runs over a piece of your debris. While in the process, you end up smacking the wall and DNFing yourself. Next at Charlotte, the only track they attempted twice, Kyle Busch was on pace to having his best run up to this point and the teams as well. They were running mostly inside the top 15s and 20s, but per usual to the theme of this video, something would always go wrong. Even though they were on track to having their best run, they still couldn't pull it together. Now what happened off turn 4? Two guys started fighting the wheel. Actually, one just spun. That was how Bush had just spun, and uh, Sterling hit the apron. When he hit the apron, it just shot the car sideways. See if he doesn't get hit by Kyle Busch here. No. Oh, oh, yeah. no. Now watch, he goes down here. He might. Oh, yeah, yeah they, he did. Take a walk. The last race they ever did was a somber one. It was one week after the tragic Hendrick plane crashes that took place at Martinsville. All they wanted to do was end their run on a positive note. Up to this point, it was already well known Kyle Busch was going to take over the five and wanted to go out with a bang. Did you give him a big yahoo when he did that, Matt? BP, all professional. He's just hunkered down, digging. All right. Back in the garage, Kyle Busch has just coasted to a stop moments ago in his uh, Hendrick Motorsport Chevrolet. The infamous Hendrick 84 team's stats are this. Zero wins, zero top fives, zero top tens, an average finish of 35.2 along with four DNFs and three DNQs. Come 2005, Kyle Busch was officially in the five ride and the 84 was never ran at Hendrick Motorsports again. It goes to show that not every project a big time megabuck team like Hendrick Motorsports does always pans out. So that'll do it for the worst Hendrick Motorsports entry. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.